All I want to do is riff on everybody's talks. <sighs> this has been amazing. Um, my decision to create a fake uh, uh, religion was based almost entirely on uh, the story of the invention of the pa potato chip, which was two parts irritation and one part uh, inspiration on the, on the part of a chef. For me, the inspiration was uh, obviously the Muppets, but the irritation was that I had never had really what one would call a religious experience in my life. I, I was raised Unitarian, which is basically a bunch of adults standing in a room going, oh. And uh, <laughs> when I got married, I graduated to Presbyterianism. And although that, you know, has a little bit more dogma attached to it, both of them are fairly anti-dogma. The dilemma is that dogma gives us the language and the mindsets by which we create meaning around morality. When you don't have that, you need some other sort of schema. Fortunately, the Muppets have all of the elements of a, a classic sort of secular humanism uh, that makes us all so effective uh, uh, today. And so Forster posits that there are four kinds of sort of secular humanist uh, core values. And if we do a little quadrant graph, which is something that I love to do, we can start to isolate the kinds of Muppets that embody these values. And you'll probably identify yourself as we go along. Low propensity for chaos, low propensity for bravery, Sam the Eagle. It doesn't mean he's not brave, it just means he's a Hufflepuff. He wants to support the institutions that already exist. He wants to create, uh, you know, meaning within rigid schema. New ideas, maybe not so much for Sam. Maybe your challenge as a Sam the Eagle is to embrace change a little bit more. Contrast that with the free thinkers of the world, high propensity for bravery, high propensity for chaos, gonzo, right? Most people in Portland, most people in Portland are living in the future, some kind of future. They're living in an RV, for example, or they're, they're doing something like that. Uh, the problem with the gonzo archetype, and I, I, I think most of the audience is gonzos, but the problem with them is that they, they don't really feel like they belong, despite the fact that they're you know, really coming up with some amazing ideas, they don't feel at home. Uh, high propensity for chaos, low propensity for bravery is animal, the sensationalist. Imagine the first time you've ever seen a baby eat a peach. Just that pure joy, the astonishment, the, the realization. Animal is an experiential Gnostic, right? All he wants to do is have sensations and make amazing discoveries as a result of them but maybe a little bit limited in his, in his reaction set. You know, his behaviors are perhaps a little restrictive. So again, when you face change, maybe do with something a little different. And then Elmo, right? Oh, I heard the Oz. Elmo wants to know. Elmo has questions. He wants there to be answers to the questions. That's why the propensity for chaos is relatively low. But he's brave enough to ask them every single time. Even if it's like, what? It's, it's just air. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Um, and then, of course, balanced among all of this is this sort of central dude who is able to be whatever is required, whatever archetype is necessary, no matter what. Kermit. What we all want to do when we're Muppetologists is uh, reach our inner Kermit. <laughs> Kermit believes that no skill is too crazy to show off. He believes that no idea is too crazy to try. He thinks, at the end of the day, that if somebody's willing to get up on the stage and talk about something, that they should be able to. He also thinks that collaboration is vital to making any of this work. That if you share your ideas and share play and share thought with other people, you have an opportunity to actually build something really special. And so that collaboration is also very important. Now. When you become a very high-level Muppetologist, you get led, led into a small room and told that there is a puppet master inside your brain. There is a person who is trying to detract you from the dream that is in your heart, right? And you need to ask yourself, am I a man or am I a Muppet? And you need to say to yourself, Who's, whose truth is this? And if it's not your truth, punch the puppet master in the face. Take your voice and your being and your behaviors back. Walter, of course, in the, in the most recent Muppets movie, says as long as there are Muppets, there are hope. 
there's hope, and I, I definitely believe that. I think it's uh, an important tenet of Muppetology that if we all go out and evangelize it, uh, it, it shall become so. So thanks very much. Amazing first half. <laughs>